Hi how? In the last video sessions we have seen we have covered up everything from the basics up right to the area how to utilize the properties, how to utilize the assertions, now to play with everything in the basic level. And now we'll be seeing how to handle the dynamic changing values using the property transfer, uh, using the UI, SOAP UI, 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 and then how to reutilize the property from one test step to another using this property transfer. And then we'll be uh, seeing how to work on with this on a Salesforce application. So just let's basically get into it. Let's start. Into this thing. So, as I already mentioned, the prerequisite for this is the visitor playing with any SOAP UI related project. We need to have the visitor. So, first, we need to get the visitor for Salesforce application. So, I'll be watching it in the Google Drive and I'll be sharing the link. At the end of my videos, from there you can copy the sales force visitor and utilize in your project for testing. For testing the sample or you wanted to practice on the sales force application too, you can just practice over here. So how to get the, how to create or register an account for Salesforce, as I already mentioned. So this is This is the URL for Salesforce application. So we just need to click on sign in after navigating this particular site and then provide all the values, all the data, and then click on sign me up. Once you register, you will be provided with the link to authenticate yourself. And once you are done with that verification of your account, you need to just simulate hit this URL. So once you hit this URL, you will be asked to reset the token. Click on reset API token, and then you will be sent out a token to your registered email account like this. Then copy and save all this information. When we are working with the Salesforce application, we require that API token. The security token as well. And then the digital file. As I already told, I'll be uploading it to the Google Drive and I'll be sharing that link at the end of the videos. So, we now get to check where the digital is available for me. So you will test somewhere in here. Yeah. So this is a test link. A copy out with this term. I will be placing over here. And then take the crystal file. Copy the path of the crystal file. Okay, let me save it and then and whatever the password you have and this is the API token, I have all those things ready. Now let's start. So after this, having the prerequisites ready, then we need to get start up. So as we done earlier, to get a hands on, click SOAP UI project once again and give the name of the project as day four. Give it as Salesforce. So 
will understand that they are working on Salesforce application. And then the digital path. This is the digital path. So click on OK. Um, so something wrong with this? I think it's already available over here. That's the reason it is going like this. So just let me. Okay. I assume this is already available over here. That's the reason it is not allowing me to do so. Okay. So uh, we already know how to create the project. So just let's see. Give me a minute. So uh, it's already like a project we have. So I'm not having this still alone. So that's the reason it was not allowing me to do so. Just let me delete it. So let me delete the test route. Salesforce. So this is all we have. So this is the interface with all the operations that are available. You can see these are all the operations that are supported with Salesforce. There are so many APIs, so many operations that is supported with the Salesforce. And now let's do the same thing as we do earlier. Let me delete all this. So now let me save it. Control Alt is the project gets saved. If you don't believe, I'll save all projects. This is the best idea. And okay, everything is saved. So now let me create. Ready with the project structure. Now we need to create the test step. Add soap request. Now uh, we are having some tens of requests available in the Salesforce. We'll be looking at login and logout first. So let me click. Mm, so it was for login. Let me do it for long. So select the login operation and click OK. Now all the basic session, click OK. So this is the request, SOAP request. So you have something like optional fields, organization, portal ID and all those things, but uh, we will not be having any organization ID as anything because we are not a paid members of Salesforce. So what we can do is like we need to just uh, comment of this thing. So without commenting, we will just look in what will happen if we don't comment it and then we will comment, uh, see why we need to comment. So without providing any inputs, just trigger and see what happens. 
so fault code what fault code says is invalid login what still expires id is malfunction organized id as i told we are not having it and so we have something so the first thing we got is the source of so what we will do is we'll comment the organized id so how to comment less than quotation hyphen hyphen and then hyphen hyphen correct then so this is how we comment in xml tags so once we have commented simulate it again so go back and see it says something what it reads invalid login invalid username password and security token for user logged out so it is saying like you need to provide username password and something else so let's see so you need to provide username this is my username then we are asking the password password is framed in such a way like this this is this my password and then we need to pass the security token along with that this is how it was framed so now just simulate it and see say the portal id is not valid so even we don't have the portal id what we need to do is the same thing comment it if you have it you can use it but as of now we don't have since we are not registered members we are just using for our basic test so we comment them now simulate and see so we got the response success So see here, uh, the server URL, and then you can see tag contains server URL, session ID, user ID, and all this information. Okay, just copy out the session ID and server URL. So just to understand the concept of dynamic changing properties. Dynamically changing how to handle time changing values. Just copy out those things. So, server URL is this. So this is the session ID. Okay. So now simulate it once again, one more time. Copy it once again. So for you are URL and session. You can see it's something different. This everything is common up to 43, and this part is different. Here it is changing. So this is dynamically changing. So we cannot use the URL. The same URL we cannot store it in some property, and we cannot utilize elsewhere. While simulating various requires. The consumer requests like login and doing some other operation, some other operation do might require the session ID. But you can see, even the session ID, you can see the end. Copy the session ID. Better. So 
okay salesforce url got changed so this is different server that is different server so randomly different servers are being picked up and let's open it in node pair we can understand it better Session ID is still valid, so it was not expired, so it was still valid. Session ID found out. Let's close it off. Come back again. Oh, sorry. Let's simulate it one more time. You see, this ID is changed. So we see that URL got changed, but this ID still remains same. It is having some time constraint up to which it remains uh, constant and it expires after that. So until it expires, it is still valid. So what the problem is like? Every time the server gets changed, so that is dynamically changing. And once you log in and log out, you need to utilize this session. So let's create one more test. And after that, we'll get to know how to utilize this thing. So, create a logout. Let's see. Logout. Okay. Now, operation is logout. So, this is the SOAP request. So what we require over here, session ID. We just simulate it and see. Show something. Destination URL not reset. The URL returned from the login must be set in the Salesforce service. What you saying? We need to set over there. What is that we need to set it? We need to set it. This URL. After that, and something else it says. So this is what it says in the first instance. Instance, and now we click on run and see it still a soap fault. So it's saying invalid session ID. So we didn't give any session ID, so it says invalid. And just copy. It. Use it. So click on. So let's move it. So it says so it's success. So we received the response. So now this Let's run both the things together. For running both the things together, you need to go to the test case level 
and you can see here login and log out and then you can click on run this test case so what happened oh logon got failed what happened so let's close everything first okay let's simulate once again it's so random that's what we think but there is a reason okay it says fail what is the reason one got fail log out got fail one the response message is this occurs usually after session expires or a user logs out so what happened first time you logged in and you logged out so the session whichever is there it will be available within the login and log out and also it will be valid only for a specified period of time so these are the constraints since you logged in and logged out for the first time the session got expired if you are utilizing the same session it will not be valid so we cannot store the session id in some property value and we cannot utilize it because it is randomly changing one thing and second thing the url every time we log in it is pointing to a different url so for every every server which is hitting which it is getting from has a different session id so that's the problem even the url will be dynamically changing so these kind of dynamically changing values we cannot store in the property files when the property is level and we cannot utilize them so for this for this concept for overcoming these things we are using the property transfer concept so just let's see what the error is shown basically this error usually occurs after session expires or user log outs legal session section session not on that's what it says okay what we'll do is like we'll get the session from the login and we'll utilize it okay we'll see whether this works or not even So let me keep in the login. So login request. So sorry, login request. And login request. We need to change the session ID. As we see that this is the error. This is because of this we are getting the error. Okay. I'll we'll just let's simulate it once again and see. Okay. Fast. So the session ID is changing between the logout and login. So session ID is dynamically varying. Even the URL has a different server every time we navigate to. Every time we hit, it's having zero zero D six F something. And if we simulate the test cases again. Since the session ID is dynamically changing between the login and logout, the earlier session ID before the logout which we have created, it is not valid once we log in again. So that's the reason it is failed. So okay. So we need to get the session ID from the login and utilize it in logout. So every time we need to change it manually. That is not possible. So we need to transfer. It from login, the session ID from the login should be transferred to logout. So this is where we use the concept of property transfer. So I think this is a very good example for property transfer. So okay, let's come back and see how to do the property transfer. So for property transfer, we need to one, add one more test step. So click on add test step, and we can see here there is a test step called property transfer. So click on that. So what we are doing? We are doing the property transfer. What is the property? System ID transfer from login to log out. So this is what we are doing. Just name it like this, so we can understand it very easily. So now. Can see over here. 
it says success in id transfer it reads out what we are given and you hold the mouse cursor and you can see adds a new property transfer click over here give the name as session id so this is the property value which we want to transfer to okay and then what is the source from where you want to transfer we want to transfer from login to logout so select login and property what is the property from which property we want to transfer where we are getting the session id we are getting the session id in the response so click response and there is something else we can see so there is something called as how will be getting the property using xpath using json or using uh, json path or using the xquery we are going to use xpath and get the value so as we have seen already how to get the value we are assigning it in assertions value assertion as well star colon and uh, let's copy directly from there else we might get some mistake the tag name the spelling mistake also will cause a lot of trouble so copy it directly so the value in this tag will be transferred to where we need transfer to logout so click logout and where we want it to transfer it to request and that is xpath and where we want to transfer it in the xpath same have a check of it what is the xpath session id so this is what the xpath so this is the tag name first Right. So that's it. We are all ready, and you can click on it, and you can see whether it got transferred or not. Then select your property transfer. If you are having multiple properties to transfer, you can click this one. Or if you are, or if you wanted to see for only one 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 by one, you can just select the particular one, and you can just click. Got it. and you can see what is the property that got transfer property transfer value this one you can see the log so this is the log so this property got transferred and it really got transfer or not you have a doubt yes let's go in there and you can see this is what got transferred okay um still we have a doubt Just keep it as question mark. So then we believe it. So come back. Click on property transfer. So oh, it is transferred. So log. Go over there, and you can see over here. Yes, it was done. Now we believe it. Okay. So now we are utilizing the property transfer to transfer from there to there. But this property transfer should happen when? It should happen before logout. So get this below. So we'll simulate login, and once we logged in, we get the session ID, and this session ID we need to transfer using the property transfer to logout. So that should be the second step. So now let's simulate all together. So it's passed. So this is how the property is transferred from login to logout. The dynamically changing values are handled in this sort of manner using the property transfer concept. So now we have seen the property transfer using manually setting through UI. But at a later point of time, when you are coming to the automation part, we will be looking at all those things, running uh, these all test steps and all those things through Groovy script.
and also how to transfer this thing that also will be utilizing using grow is not like uh, we'll be uh, putting out the property transfer annually so that's all so we are covered property transfer utilizing the properties at various levels the test project level test suit level test case level global level and utilizing those them uh, those properties in the request and then we have validated the response using the assertions and then we came up to the property transfer and we are finished up with the property transfer so we are all good to go to one more last topic in the manual part that is mocking the services so we'll see uh, the basics of the mock i mean what is mocking so what is the purpose of mocking and uh, what are the basic terminologies that are available in the mocking and all those things so why basically we require mocking and and all those things so thanks thank you all